Okay, so at this point, Amber Heard got a lot of issues. But at the end of the day, because she's like this, does this mean it's impossible that she's been hurt? Does all this mean that it's impossible that she could have been abused? Does the fact that she's come out seemingly like such a heinous person mean that she's automatically exempt from having been abused? I was thinking about one thing that could possibly be happening. Because she does have such a heinous image, subconsciously, they won't actually say it out loud, but subconsciously a lot of people feel like, okay, if she's lied so much and she's acted so much and she's manipulated so much, maybe Johnny Depp did do something to her, but maybe she deserved it because she's been a bad girl. She's been a bad girl. So this is Stylist. You know a lot about what's going on in here already, but I'm going to take you down to this section here, this particular section here, the perfect victim reborn. Basically the gist of this is, it seems like people only want to believe victims who are perfect. They never swear, they don't drink, they wear the right kind of clothing, they dress their hair the right way. They are like a picture-perfect representation of the absolute innocent victim. But how, how often do you actually get victims who are that perfect? Frequently victims are heroin addicts or they're, um, you know, maybe they've got emotional issues. Maybe there's 101 things that they, maybe they're a bad parent, you know? And then, oh, because that person's a victim of physical abuse, but they're also imperfect, the imperfection seems to gloss over the fact that they've been abused. People use uh, that person's imperfections to waive the fact that they've been abused. There is, of course, no such thing as a perfect victim. But that fact hasn't stopped social media users from scrutinizing Heard's physical and emotional behavior on the stand and holding up it up as evidence that she's not telling the truth. Careful, man. Millions of people have been scrutinizing everything about her, says Dr. Taylor. Why is she crying? Why is she not crying? Why is her memory recall of some, some instant incidents not good, but for others it is razor sharp? Why didn't she tell somebody? Why did she cover her injuries with makeup? Why didn't she? It's just endless nitpicking. I'm going to say I'd agree with this. The number of posts making light of the allegations being made. A lot of making light of her allegations, including the form of TikTok videos reenacting Heard's testimony and compilations of Depp's best moments on the stand, also sends a similar message. The rise in strategic litigation. Yep, that's the law teams. To silence survivors of abuse is something which gives me huge cause for concern, says Davison. Wealth, status and threats are often used to try and suppress survivors from coming forward. And the idea that litigation can be used as a way of ensuring people are too afraid to come forward is a terrifying prospect. The image the image of Heard that has been painted throughout the course of this trial as a deceptive, over-emotional ex-wife who makes things up for attention is also incredibly damaging. The misogynistic belief that women are over-emotional and attention-seeking has long been used to belittle those who allege abuse, but the arguments made during this trial have gone a significant way towards legitimizing this way of thinking. Here's the thing, it seems to me women can't make mistakes. Women are not permitted to make the same kinds of mistakes that men make. Still in this day and age, men get away with so much more than women do and they can go back to a semi-regular life. This girl 
after her pranks and after all that she's gone through, if she was a man, all the publicity about her or him would sort of build on itself and she'd probably still get roles, you know, she'd probably be painted as a certain kind of character, but she'd still be in the business. Well, let's think in the scenario that she's a man now, she's a him. Yeah, he'd sort of be branded like a, a, a bad boy, right? A bad boy, like, an, and it's got a sort of cool, sharp image to it. And you don't know what he's going to do, and he's a little bit dangerous, and the women supposedly love him. Oof, you know, like, the, there's other words, too. Like, the words from sort of yesteryear would be like, oh, he's a scallywag, or he's a rascal. Rascal. Maverick. Yes, baby, maverick, my cat's here. Uh, maverick. Every, a lot of people love the word maverick. Um, I looked up the, the meaning of the word maverick in this big old dictionary here. Maverick. True. Where is it? Maverick. Yeah. Uh, in the US, an unbranded steer or a stray cow or a calf. Two, independent or unorthodox person. Independent or unorthodox person. It doesn't necessarily mean a man. It's just a person who's in independent and unorthodox. So this could be a woman too. Just just for all of you out, out there to, or naming your, your baby boys Maverick. It's also possible that you could name your girl. Your baby girl Maverick as well. You can do that too. Mm. Yeah, so like... That whole like, oh, dangerous, dangerous, oh, he's, he's got a bit of mystery about him, or he does some bad stuff sometimes. Maybe it's that mistaken female feeling like he's dangerous out there, but maybe he'll be different with me. You know, like I'll have a different effect on him. I don't know what it is. It drives me nuts. It's so boring. It, it makes me want to like roll my eyes when I hear it. Bad boy, he's a bad boy. But with her now, as she is as a woman, and as you've probably seen, like, I don't think it's going to be the same for her. Just from my vantage point. Women can't make mistakes. Not the same way men can. Maybe it's because society has been patriarchal for so long. And so there's so much focus on what women are supposed to be and then the men just get to enjoy or experience whatever that they are but there's this huge expectation of what what is a good girl what is a bad girl and then if something bad were to happen to these girls good or bad oh then that would change the perception of what what kind of justice they would would they would be due It makes me think of stone throwing. <laughs> We've still got such a long way to go, man. Wow. Whew. <laughs> I think what's got to happen is, and not so much males, it's actually females that, that carry this benchmark. The benchmark of admiration for males. I think that whole like 007 image from before is kind of wearing thin because... You know, in the old movies, there was, there was a fair amount of clouting females when, you know, he dismissed what they were saying or whatever. There's a certain amount of that. And that idea is sort of like receding. But, but I actually think we have to, females on the whole, maybe sort of, uh, it's sort of going to be hundredth monkey effect at some point. And we're all going to hit a state of, uh, we're going to reach a state of critical mass in terms of group consciousness or group subconsciousness thinking we're gonna hit we're all gonna hit a critical mass where this kind of thing is just gonna be boring and a little bit old and everyone's just gonna roll their eyes when they hear it